fit uh, better on what uh, I'm doing here. But actually, my topic is a little bit messy. And the reason why it's a little bit messy is because uh, um, I specialize in Islamic ethics. And I have been trying to look at different perspectives that uh, Muslims bring into the topic of uh, genetically modified food. Okay? Well, some people say that it is permissible halal, and some people argue that uh, it, uh, it shouldn't be made permissible. Okay? So, before I started looking at different perceptions that Muslims brought to the topic, I thought that it might be appropriate to uh, have a kind of educated opinion myself on the issue of genetically modified food. Um, but that took me into so much, uh, so, so many studies and so many articles written on the topic because it, uh, it is actually a very controversial topic uh, in the United States, in the Europe, and all over the world. So, um, before I start talking about Islamic ethics, which is my, 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 my main discipline, uh, I have to take you uh, on a journey through some, um, uh, some related things that we have to go through before talking about Islamic ethics, which is mainly, uh, we are going to uh, do it in three sections. To do this presentation, and I go through it through, uh, by the dividing it into three sections. The first section will talk about the genetically modified organisms. I'm focusing, of course, on food and uh, why is it controversial. Uh, safety to health and environment is at stake. And then we are going to see some political and economic factors that also uh, led uh, to the emerging of a food sovereignty movement in the Latin America and worldwide. After that, we will move to discuss uh, different perspectives of Muslim scholars on the issue of genetically modified food, which you can uh, definitely discuss under uh, applied ethics in Islam, or uh, more specifically, under food ethics in Islam. I'm going to look at some of the arguments of those who support genetically modified food and those who are against. Before I move to, uh, to argue, uh, to, to, to give you my view on the topic and to argue uh, and uh, reflect on different points of views given by the scholars that I investigate. Well, the genetically modified organism is defined as an organism in which the genetic material has been altered in a way that does not occur naturally by mating or natural recombination. Genetic engineering is a set of technologies, very impressive technology actually, that changes the genetic makeup of a cell, including transferring genes between species and also sometimes across the species boundary. Now, but why are they controversial? Even genetically modified food, not to speak about cloning or about other issues related to the technology. We are, even the genetically modified organisms are controversial mainly because there is kind of polarism in the scientific community itself between those scientists who uh, say that the genetically modified food are uh, very beneficial to humanity, that most probably they are the only possible solution to world hunger. And there are other scientists who have also written uh, many, uh, many, many articles, scientific articles, arguing that genetically modified food actually can harm our health and can have a, and has a negative impact on the environment. Indeed, uh, for example, this is taken from a website uh, uh, published by Monsanto, which is a giant uh, food corporation. And uh, they argue that uh, during the last 20 years, since the genetically modified food was commercialized, uh, they have, there is no evidence of harm to humans or animals. And they say that genetically modified food will save agriculture, will, will save, uh, uh, will, will uh, release, uh, sorry, will save actually agriculture drought problems. Uh, the genetically modified crops will yield more. 
uh, they improve the nutrition, the nutrition because they can uh, be have more vitamin A for the rice or have different uh, different uh, other vitamins, and also they can improve food quality. So it will stay longer, it will not change its shape or it will not. Uh, well, on the other side, there are also, uh, this, mainly I'm focusing on the main things. Of course, the, argument, uh, the arguments, different arguments are much more bigger. Um, they involve scientists, activists, ethicists, but I'm just here focusing on the main arguments. In response to those uh, claims made by Monsanto and others, uh, for example, we have the Union of Concerned Scientists based in the United States. They have uh, actually published three documents in 2009, arguing that uh, one of them is arguing that genetic uh, engineering is not saving agriculture's drought problem, and that contrary to the myth about the superiority of genetically engineered crop, uh, uh, it is actually that the, most of the yield, most of yield gains in the recent years are due to traditional breeding or improvement of other agricultural practices, not because of genetic modification. Also, uh, they argue that genetically modified food might be harmful to humans and animals and threaten the ecological balance of the environment. Many have argued that the products of the technology have been quickly commercialized and released to the market without being sufficiently uh, tested and they uh, supporting this argument by the fact that the FDA in the United States kind of sided with Monsanto and with other companies that produce this food and made a huge amount of money out, uh, out of actually commercializing the genetically modified crops. Well, for that reason, because many people are convinced that a genetically modified food is a threat to our health and environment, we uh, can see that in the, indeed uh, people protested against Monsanto and other companies, giant corporations, transnational corporations, uh, that some people think and men think actually that they tried to monopolize food industry. That's why people all over the world actually uh, they protested against uh, genetically modified food becoming part of our food system, demanding for the seeds of freedom. Well, indeed, when I started to investigate the topic, I thought that genetically modified food are like complete disaster, that we shouldn't eat it at all. But to my surprise, I found out that actually maybe most of the things that we are eating now are genetically modified. So, and the United, the United States, people have been eating genetically modified food for almost 20 years. So what can we do about this uh, conflicting scientific evidence? Some people are saying there is no harm in eating them, others saying there, there, there is harm, and uh, that, but, uh, so what? So what can we do about it? Well, maybe the most important, the most powerful argument was the argument that took into consideration economic, political, and social factors, rather than only scientific factors. But before moving to that uh, argument, which is uh, political and economic, uh, let me talk a little bit about the Cartagena, uh, the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety, uh, on Biological Diversity. Uh, this is a protocol uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, was established, that was agreed upon in uh, 2000 and entered into force in 2003. And indeed, according to this protocol, all ge genetically, modified, uh, genetically modified organisms have to be monitored and regulated so that people in the world can uh, track the movement of the genetically modified food to make sure that they don't contaminate uh, the fields that are not genetically modified, that they don't mix with other foods that we would like them to be organic and natural. Well, many countries did sign this protocol and uh, accordingly they have, uh, uh, they have made mandatory JMG labeling and that which is the rule in more than 64 countries so far. 
However, the major markets like the US, Canada, and Argentina, and most of the continent of uh, Africa, they do not require the labeling of genetically modified food. And of course, that is a very controversial issue nowadays in the United States. Some people are asking for the GM to be labeled, and some people say, but no, they are normal, they're just as any other food, so they don't need to label them. Well, Although legislations that oblige importers to label food exist in some countries who have signed this protocol, uh, yet they are not enforced in most of them. And that is the problem. Moving to the uh, political and economic factors that people uh, take into consideration when mainly arguing against the genetically modified food. Indeed, uh, they are linking the proliferation of genetically modified crops uh, to the uh, new green revolution, to the new food regime, which started in the late 90s, and uh, they, are, they claim or they, they say that it is actually that the new liberal process of commodification and corporalization that mark the current food regime portray a global food system dominated by private corporations like Monsanto, Syngenta, uh, Dupont, uh, that advocate the realization of food security. And this term, food security, is very important because it is also uh, supported by different, uh, by different organizations in the United States, like uh, in the United Nations, so like uh, World Trade Organization and FAO. Now, but according to this uh, new liberal uh, policy, the global south, including our area of the world, uh, are required to open their economies to the north dominated international food trade, dismantle farm sector, uh, and adopt intellectual pro property, uh, properties protections. For that reason, because of this food regime and the dominant uh, neo, uh, neoliberal policies, uh, many people uh, protested against this food regime and the most important maybe uh, movements are uh, those that are, uh, uh, that, uh, that are somehow related to the La Via Campensia, which uh, was established, La Via Campensia? Which? Campensia? Campensia. Okay. <laughs> So, which was established in Latin America. Uh, instead of arguing for uh, food, uh, food security, they are arguing for food sovereignty. Okay? And they are requiring more sustainable agriculture, uh, food, justice and, uh, uh, food justice, and activists and philosophically minded people are writing on food justice and promoting food sovereignty. Actually, this is a very strong movement and happens to be affiliated with other movements across the world, including in uh, Egypt. Well, I'm going to skip this one about Jordan and now to move to talk about food ethics and Muslims' food ethics. Mainly, when we talk about Muslim food, Muslims' food ethics, it includes the food ethics that we know in the West, which clearly provides ethical analysis and guidance for human contact, production, distribution, preparation, and consumption of food. <laughs> Muslims, ethics, food ethics includes that, in, and in addition to that, they integrate, uh, they integrate some religion-specific teachings. Well, <coughs> let me just uh, say that uh, in a few words that indeed, uh, when we talk about the Muslim ethics and jurisprudence, they are kind of linked together. But so far, most of the Muslim scholars tend to mix fitter jurisprudence and Islamic law with morality, akhlaq, and ethics. And uh, unfortunately, in most of the cases, uh, they, have, uh, they focus on meat and whatever is related to meat. Uh, for vegetables, for, uh, for fruits, for crops, that is not a big issue, according to most of the Muslim scholars, because that is, already, that is halal. That is viewed by many as being halal. And that is because of the main verses in the Quran 
that where we are told that a certain uh, food that is derived from animals is forbidden, but there is no mention of any food that is derived from, from vegetables or fruits. And of course, genetically modified food, that's in the theology, that is not mentioned in the Quran or in the Hadith. Well, indeed, actually, that led to many important Islamic institutions like the Islamic Jurisprudence Council, IJC, which is affiliated with Muslim World League, based in Mecca, and also uh, the, um, the equivalent councils in Indonesia, in Malaysia, and other parts of the world, to consider that uh, food derived from biotechnology, improved GM of crops, are permissible, halal, fit for consumption, consumption by Muslims. Well, of course, some scholars suggested that such food could possibly become haram if they contain DNA from explicitly forbidden food, like, like pigs. And that is still ongoing, uh, ongoing the debate, because some still argue that uh, the, the DNA of the, of the pig can be transformed when you are using it in a different uh, kind of food. Well, arguments in favor of GMO food uh, mainly uh, those who do, do not favor, those who try to argue that GMO is haram, they were citing two important verses from the Quran. A verse in which Satan is, uh, uh, is depicted as saying, I will order them to alter the creation of God. And a verse that says, no change should there be in the creation of God. Those were uh, used sometimes by people who wanted to ban GMO food, uh, GMO and research and commercializing it all together. However, the Muslim scholars who are pro-GMO, who, who actually embrace GMO, they uh, successfully kind of argue that modern and classical Muslim scholars, they have never uh, used those verses um, in a literal sense. They have to be interpreted uh, metaphorically uh, because they indeed only indicate uh, moral or spiritual, uh, spiritual morality of human being and not when they talk, they talk about altering creation that is altering human nature, not about the uh, different uh, stuff. Well, also, those who support the GMOs, actually, in the Muslim world and the Arab world, they are the same people who uh, very much emphasize that there is no conflict between Islam and science. There is no conflict and that Islam has nothing against the scientific advancement. And uh, indeed, uh, some of them say that uh, there is a verse in the Quran which says, He know all that lies upon before men and all that is hidden from them. Arguing that genetic engineering is a technology, is a technology actually that was brought to people by God. <coughs> Indeed, uh, most of the Muslim scholars also refer to the concept of, of maslaha, which is well-being. Okay, and uh, for that, for that reason, they weight benefits and uh, harms of genetically modified food uh, uh, by this concept of muscle which is well-being. So those who are for GMOs, they think that the benefits overweight the harms. Those who are against, they think that the, the, the harms overweight the benefits. So at the end, we go nowhere. We are just repeating the same arguments that are represented by, uh, by science, by science, by, uh, sciences uh, by sorry, scientists over the, uh, in the world. Indeed, what I really want to only to emphasize to go over all the debate is that it is uh, actually those people who argue against the genetically modified food who bring their political and social factor into, the, uh, into their argument. So somebody like uh, Abu Zanita in 2010 uh, she uh, strongly argued that the, benefit, that the benefit included in genetically modified food is actually the benefit, uh, uh, is the material profit that goes to the uh, group of uh, 
corporations or companies that are producing GM1, nothing else. Indeed, the problem is that uh, those people who are against genetically modified food, uh, they kind of adopt an exclusivist tone, uh, thinking that people are either good and evil. Uh, the, the evil people are those who are capitalists, who are promoting the current food regime, who are for the genetically modified food. But the good people are not the people who are against this, but they are only uh, the Muslims who should be against genetically modified food. Kind of disregarding the fact that Indeed, most of the people who are against genetically modified food uh, as it is nowadays um, uh, in, the, in the kind of uh, spread in the world, they are uh, the people, the people secularists. They are not affiliated with any religion. Well, dividing the world into capitalists and Islamists suggests that, for example, the Fufaha who are for genetically modified food are secularists. And that suggests that those who are against genetically modified food, they are Muslims, maybe without knowing it, which is not the fact. So I am basically arguing for a more inclusive approach when it comes to arguing against genetically modified food. More inclusive approach like that would include people from other religions and traditions who have looked into the issue and argued against genetically modified food. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.